Hello everyone and welcome to the No Zone. I'm Charlie. My name is Wanja. It's holiday time again and as usual, we have some of the segments you really had fun watching on the No Zone lined up for you so don't go anywhere. But first, let's find out what some of the buzzers you'll come across are. Labor. Responsibility. Beat. Try. Fight. Elder. Parent, home, share, responsible. But dad, what about school in the junction? No, no, Babu. You have to understand. I have lost my job and your shosho here is too old to fend for our family. Right, we all have to try to get food for the family. But what about... You will have to find a way to get some extra cash to buy food. But what about school? Babu! You will have to find a way to get some extra cash to buy food. You, 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 you useless pieces of charcoal. Huh? Why can't you arrange yourselves? Huh? Do you think I have all the time in the world to keep on working on you, you purple heads? You see, I would pay anything, anything just to have this sorted and taken to the market. I need to put money in my pocket, and all you're doing is sitting on yourself, you see? Ah! Do you need help? Why me? I can help you if you pay me. You see, this sack contains 30 kilograms of charcoal. Mm -hmm. These tins can carry two kilograms each. In essence, what I'm saying is, you'll arrange this sack into the 15 tins. Get it? Start working. <laughs> Hey, Brian, look, the sky is nice. totally green. Yeah, look. Where? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get started in the mission. Don't make it a hard So our teacher has given Brian, James, Babu, and I just one day to form a team and debate on the topic child labor. The debate is tomorrow after class. I suggest we use the name Junction Jr. Kwani, we were going to call ourselves Harambe <laughs> We are going to go against child labor and we need your help. I would like to be the secretary. The participants have to be from our class only, so I'm sorry, Bakari, you can't be secretary. But your thought teacher said we can pick someone from another class to help us on the debate. Okay, okay then Amishi Bakari and I will help in the research. Yes, I knew we could count on you. But since Babu is not here, I can work on the debating structure and Brian and James can do the debating. Yeah? What? I wonder why he did not make it to school today. Who? Babu! Well. Hey, I hope you didn't bring germs and viruses into my homestead. I think I'm done here. Are you sure? Oh, that was fast. Oh, but I know I've done it faster and better than you. It's only that you looked like you needed a job. See, you people from poor families. That will do, yeah? But you said you'll give me a hundred shillings. And who said the job is over? This is just for encouragement, huh? Babu, when you're done with this lot, then you'll get your hundred bob, right? But... But what, Babu? Do you need the money or not? Yes. Then get back to work. What's wrong with you?
won't win. I wish Babu was here. You don't even have to pay up with this yeah. baby. Hey, you guys, I hear that Babu was saying going to Benson's house this morning. I hear that man is a bad man. You know, he locks children up in his house just to scare them. Hey, yeah. me, I was even told he makes children work and then they miss school. Eh? Mm. Mad. Maybe he even beats them to make them work. Oh, poor Babu. What will we do? Amishi, Brian, James, and I will go to Benson's house to I, check if I, Babu is there, okay? Then Bakari and I will go find Chief Matano. Thank oh. oh. God. Oh, Juniors! Yay! Hey! We had you in trouble. Go before he wakes up or I lose my money. Look, we are here to help you, eh? I can't go. My father lost his job and my grandmother is too old to work. I have to do the job, otherwise my family will starve. We never thought he was paying you. We thought that he was forcing you to work. Yeah, you have to get out of here now. He's gone! Oh. <laughs> He's right behind you. <laughs> I can smell rats from miles away. That's why they call me Benson the Great. <laughs> if they call you Benson the Smelly Pony. What? Okay, now you know my true colors, yeah? Hey. No, they won't. <laughs> Chief. <laughs> Mr. Benson the Great. You of all people should know that child labor is wrong. But I didn't do anything wrong. You want to tell me this boy is all covered in charcoal because he didn't have water to bathe? How can you be so cruel to such an innocent child, messing up his schooling? It wasn't me. The boy came to me looking for a job. All I did was give him one. Now, what's wrong with that, Chief? I need the job, otherwise my family will starve. You see? You see, Chief? Hey, Chief. Babu, I understand that you are trying to help out your family. But schooling is very important for you. You should not be working at this age. I... Mr. Chief, <laughs> supposing I had a child, I'm not supposed to give them any work at home? Children should definitely help out at home. Yeah. But they have a right to an education and a right to have some free time to enjoy their childhood. What? Babu, as I told you, I understand you're trying to help out at home. But I cannot let this fellow misuse you. But my dad lost his job and my grandmother Sorry. Uh, hey, hey. It's you who should be sorry. Babu, I would like to speak to your father, and I'm sure we can work out a solution to all this. As for you, Mr. Benson the Great, you are coming with me to the camp, and you get a new spelling for the word labor. Chief. Chief. Uh, Chief. Make it short. Yes. Go. Let's go, we have a debate today. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. And lastly, there's a saying that says you reap what you sow. Children can't expect to eat if they don't work. Bottom line is that no one likes lazy people. Thank you. planted a maize seed and watered it for only a day. He then asked the seed to produce. Was it possible? Of course not. Young children all over the world are being forced to work and leave school. Is it fair? Thank you. It's true children need to relax, do their homework and play. But times have changed and the economy is different. The family has to work harder to survive, so to keep the family as a strong unit. Even children must work. After all, Kenya is a working nation. My sister and I once missed school, trying to help my mother till the farm. A good friend of mine yesterday missed school because he thought he had to work. We are trying to help our families. It's true. Children have to work. A 
child helping at home with light household chores is not child labor, but a child who is missing on their childhood and school is child labor, and it must be stopped. Let the maize seed grow into a plant, then ask for maize. Let us grow up and go to school for a better future. Let children be children. <laughs> Class 4B, Lele, Tibra, and James, and Babu. Yay! I want to thank you all for saving me from Benson. I was too desperate but shy to ask for help. I'm sorry. But however, Chief Matano managed to get my father a job, so all will be well at home. Yeah, and I hear Benson was taught a very good lesson. Mm. Benson, so not the great. Uh, yes, he was taught a very good lesson. Mm. Mm. A good one. Mm. Come on, guys, come on. Oops. Ah, now you see what you have done. You've ruined my sweater. I'm very sorry. It was a mistake. It's okay, but when both of us have juice stains on our sweaters. Uh, we've never been dirty like this before. Yeah, and all our clothes are stained. Mine too. Hmm, I guess we're in the same, but no wonder Lelity didn't come today. Password! Elder! Spell it! E-L-D-E-R. So, what are you doing today? Brian, you're so clean. Yeah, you are. Where did you get the water from? That's not fair. Why are you so clean? Hey, it isn't my fault. I'm just lucky to come from a home where we have a cool grandpa who knows how to plan ahead. My grandpa has a water tank which uses to catch rainwater. That way, we always have water to wash our clothes and to bathe. In fact, what is that smell? Oh. That smell is in our clothes. We all don't have water. Do you think your grandpa will allow us to use some of his water? I don't know. There's a lot of water in the tank, but I'll have to ask his permission. There's no time, Brian. Brian! Eh? Just, just look at our clothes. Eh? If she sees us like this, she'll punish us. Yeah! And Injunction Union is supposed to avoid trouble from them. Yeah! Don't you all know that we're supposed to share? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah Brian. Please, please. Brian, please. Brian, Brian, please. Can go. I'll ask his permission. Yeah. Hiya, Basi, we go. has it on this big bunch of keys. I don't know, maybe we should just ask. Yeah. But we need to wash our clothes for tomorrow. Mm. Oh. Okay. okay, 
Let me go check if my grandfather might have left the keys in her. Go, 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 go. Why didn't you just ask for water? We are all sorry we didn't ask. If only we knew how to catch rainwater and store it, or find another source so that we could have lots of water. Water is everywhere around us. It's called the water cycle. That's how I get my water. I can't just rely on the river and the council water supply. What is a water cycle? The water cycle is responsible for how water circles in our environment. The sun heats up the water in rivers and lakes, turning it from a liquid to a gas. Now, this is called evaporation. Trees also help the water cycle as water collected by their roots is evaporated into the air from their leaves. And this is called transpiration. When water evaporates, it rises and forms clouds as it cools down. Now, there it changes back into a liquid in a process known as condensation. Once the clouds are full, they rain down on us, and that's how I collect my water. The rain provides more water for the trees to drink, and some escapes back to the rivers and lakes, where the water cycle starts all over again. Oh. Now you understand where water comes from and how we can harvest it. We are all sorry, Mze Baraka. We'll make sure we ask you next time. That is all right, my child. OK, thank you again, Mze Baraka. Bye. 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 It was so nice of Mze Baraka to give us water, though we didn't ask him in the first place. Yeah, my grandpa is very kind. Mm. And now we know how the trees help in the water cycle. Yes. That's not right. They're destroying the water cycle. Okay, move the tree quickly. We've got a lot to do. cycle in the whole forest. That's true, but this is not the way to do it. Don't listen to us. 
We need to get someone else, someone much older than us. Let's get my grandpa. He'll know what to do. That's right, man. You go get her. Amisha and I will stay here and try to stop those people from cutting any more trees. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go Junction Juniors. Yes. It's illegal to cut down trees in that forest. I would have stopped him if he knew how. In fact, Nita and Amisha have stayed behind to try and tell him to stop it. But I don't think he'll listen. We are going to make him listen. Let's go to my nursery, pick up a few seedlings, and replace the trees that he has already cut down. All right? Yes. Come on. Come on, come on, boys. Let's go. All I care about is having money in my pocket. So, water cycle or no water cycle, these trees put money in my pocket. The rest is not important. I don't think so, Mr. Benson. The trees are the most important thing around this area. They ensure that there's always water for our animals and crops, and even us. So what, Mr. Baraka? So what, eh? Look, there's still plenty of trees left, and the ones I've cut down will crop back. Not true. If you don't plant another one, there won't be any growing back, and the water cycle will be broken. And who taught you that? Our science teacher. Always plant another tree if you cut one down. You. I hope you've learned a lesson. Now get out of this forest before I call the chief. Guys, let's let's get out uh, uh, out of here before we land ourselves in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, These seedlings are so heavy. If a sibling weighs three kilograms, and you carry four siblings in a day. How many kilograms would you have carried? Three kilograms, four times. Three plus three plus three plus three equals 12. Very good. Simply put, three times four equals 12 kilograms. Too bad we had to use the water you gave us to water the siblings. Don't worry, my boy. I'll make sure I send the Maspidi with more water for all of them. Plus, it's worth it for the seedlings that you're planting today. Hopefully, Teacher Benson has learned his lesson. Hopefully, you've all learned your lessons. Papa. Junction Juniors forever! Yeah. Junction Juniors! Welcome back. Now, trees are really important in our lives. That's right, Wanja. And we've also learned that water is a very precious thing and we must make very good use of it. That was a good lesson. Now let's join Teacher Pendle in Hot Numbers. Hello everyone and welcome back to Hot Numbers. Are you all ready to have fun with maths? Yes! yes. Good. Today we are going to look at perimeters of squares and rectangles. How many of you have fences around your house? Ah, all of you have fences around your house. Now, do you know how long your fence is? Well, 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 I think mine is two meters long. Oh, uh, Marara, I think it might be bigger than that. Uh, two meters is pretty small to fit a bed, leave alone a house. Oh, really? Well, I don't think I understand perimeters then. Now, the distance all around your fence is the perimeter. Now, what shape am I holding? Yes, Andati? A square. Good. Now, the distance all around this square is called the perimeter. To measure the perimeter of this square, I'll have to measure the edge of this square and then add them all up. Now, Marara, can you help me measure? Use the ruler to measure one side of the square. Okay. Okay. Uh, it is 12 centimeters. Uh -huh. So, shall I measure the next side? No, you don't have to. Oh, but Chapendo, you said we measure all the four sides and add them up. I've only measured one side. Yes, but our shape is a square. And what do we know about a square? Yes, Martin? All sides are equal. All the sides are equal. Once we know the measurement of one side, then we know the measurement of all the sides. So all the sides of this square are? 12, 12 centimeters. Very good. Now, so that makes it 12 centimeters plus 12 centimeters plus 12 centimeters plus 12 centimeters, which we could also say is 12 times 4. So what is the perimeter of this square? Yes, Stacy. 4 times 
12 centimeters is equal to 48 centimeters. Well done. Of course, we can only do this for squares. Other shapes have different sizes. Their sides are not equal. Now let's look at this rectangle. So how is a rectangle different from a square? Yes. Two of its sides are equal. That's right. So two of its opposite sides are always equal. Okay, now Marara and Wanjiro, could you measure for us the length of the rectangle, which is the longer side, and the width of the rectangle, which is the shorter side? Okay, okay. Um, the length is 20 centimeters. Aha. Yes, and the width okay. is... Just measure the width. Uh, Right, 10 centimeters. So we need to add up all the four sides. So 20 centimeters plus 20 centimeters, 10 centimeters plus 10 centimeters. So what is the answer? Yes, Nganga? 60 centimeters. That's right. Now, the perimeter of this rectangle, which is a distance all around, is 60 centimeters. So the perimeter of a rectangle is length plus width plus length plus width, which is the same as length plus length plus width plus width, which is the same as 2 times length plus 2 times width. And that of a square is length plus length plus length plus length, which is the same as length times four. Okay? Yes. yes. Good. Now in front of you are some different shapes. I'd like you to measure them and calculate their perimeters. Okay? Go right ahead. You can join in at home. Just measure up some shapes, which are rectangles or squares. You can use exercise books or whatever you come across, just as long as they are rectangles and squares. And remember, you use your ruler or your tape measure. So you're measuring your rectangle. So measure the length and then the width because your shape is a rectangle. Okay. Now you have a square, so you just measure one of the sides. Okay. What were you measuring? Yes, Mora? A textbook. So what is its perimeter? 83 centimeters. What about your team, Marara? Oh, we found the perimeter of this square, Chapendo. Aha, uh -huh. and what was its perimeter? Yes, Stacy. 84 centimeters. Now let's see what's the length of one of the sides. So it is 21 centimeters. So 21 centimeters plus 21 centimeters plus 21 centimeters plus 21 centimeters, which is the same as four times 21 is equals to 84 centimeters. Well done, everyone. Hey, uh, that was really fun. Yes, it was. Now, do you remember Elvin's story last week? Elvin is only a child and he has to work so hard to support his family. Yes, that's right. Now, we're going to be revisiting Elvin's story because it's important for us to learn how to protect the rights of children everywhere. We'll also be going for shopping with Maspidi on Out There. Shake your bones. Playtime. We make most of our friends and we have lots of fun together. But we also have to make time to support our parents at home by helping them out with the household work. However, if the child is given too much work that affects their health, their well-being or their education, then that is bad and it is called child labor. But it is good that we have some organization that take care of children's welfare. 
Okay. Yes. Good. So, Mr. Gilbert, how does Cradle deal with child labor? The Cradle um, is a child rights advisory, documentation, and legal center. We mainly offer legal advice and representation to children. Whenever we get such a case, quite often we ensure that the accused person is prosecuted um, and, and the rights of the child are upheld by the courts of law in this country. But sometimes due to the poverty levels, here in Kenya, some children have to work to be able to get basic needs like food. For example, Elvin Omusi had dropped out of school because his mother was not in a position to get food for the whole family. Elvin Omusi with his brothers live in Korokocha slums. Although him and his brothers help out with the household chores, like washing and sweeping, they know very well that they have to work a little bit harder to be able to get even a single meal for the family. He would have been in school, but he knows that would mean risking a day without food. Elvin spends most of his time at the dumping sites, trying to get anything to earn him some few coins. He is evidently tired, but he knows not any other way. This is a way of a living that he has to adapt to. This is where Elvin sells his collections for the day. Some of the stuff he comes across could be dangerous because he collects this with bare hands. He is at great risk of injuring himself or even getting sick. Wow, two kilograms and some coins too. It is good to share responsibilities. But because this makes Elvin miss school, it will definitely affect his life in future too. On a good day, Elvin comes home with some little money to help feed his family. However, this denies Elvin the chance to learn and play with his friends. On the other hand, Muteti sells groundnuts to willing customers from the roadside and still makes time to go to school. Muteti is in Standard 7 in Mukuru Primary School. And with the little money he makes, he is able to buy himself school books and even food for the whole family. It is true that the poverty levels here in Kenya are pushing the children to work to get the basic needs. But it is wrong to make children work so hard, and it is our responsibility to protect the rights of the children. Every child has a right to a good life, education, shelter, and clothing. Bye, children! wondered where grown-ups get their money to buy the things they want? <laughs> Definitely not from trees. Today we are going to learn how we can be responsible with our money. Carol is 11 years old. When she's not in the school, she helps her parents with the household chores. But because she's an active girl, when she has extra time, she asks for more work. Hey, look, this is work well done. Apart from washing this car, when she has time, she shares more responsibilities in the home, like fetching water and sweeping, and she enjoys it. It's so much fun to appreciate. The father sometimes gives her a reward for the hard work. Let's see what she does with the money. Why do you always put your money in the L-Bank? I put my money in the L-Bank so that it will help me in buying my school books. Yeah, you're a very clever girl. <laughs> She's a Jumbo Junior. I wonder why she's so careful on how she keeps her money. Once you open a Jumbo Junior account, you're given an LA bank like this one. In here, one collects their money and after some time, they take it to the bank. It's only the bank attendant who has the key to the LA bank. That means when you put your money here, you won't be tempted to get some and buy some sweets or chocolates. I didn't know you could save a lot of money like this by saving coins. 50, 100, before depositing, you have to keenly count to get the right amount.
after depositing. Carol now has enough money in her account to buy herself some school books. Let's withdraw some. Now that we have the money with us, <laughs> what else? Let's go shopping! There are so many people and so many books here. How will we be able to locate the books we want? Aha! Not to worry. Carol has the list of the books she needs, so we won't go wrong. Okay. Using the book list, the bookshop attendant is making sure that we don't forget any of the books Carol needs. Let's go and pay Carol. Now, you all agree with me that school books can be very expensive. But when you are a Jumbo Junior account holder, you receive a 5% discount on every purchase at the Savani's bookshop. See? You can save a lot and get more books if you are a Jumbo Junior account holder. It's been a long day. But remember, you have to be careful on how you save and spend your money. Bye! It's sad that some children have to work so hard. That's right, Wanja. I mean, it's such a shame because it denies them the chance to enjoy themselves as children. And we must all do our best to protect them. But for now, let's join Teacher Penda for another lesson in Cool Words. and welcome back to Cool Words. Is everyone happy to be here? Yes! Good, I like to see happy faces. In fact, happy faces will help you understand today's lesson. Really? Are we going to talk about happiness? Oh, I know what makes me happy. I like eating. Oh, <laughs> oh Marara, I would never have guessed that. Yes, and sleeping, and then eating some more. Oh. Okay, Marara, now that we know what makes you happy, what would make me happy is if we got on with this lesson. Oh, okay, sure. Good. Now, before we get started, would someone look at this picture and tell me what feeling or expression is expressed here? Yes, Mudoni? I think the face is expressing sadness. Aha, uh -huh, very good. How about this one? Ooh, ooh I know that one. I know yes, that one. Yes, Marara? The face is expressing happiness. Mm hmm And how about this one? Yes, Sarah? It looks like it's about to burst with anger. Well done, everyone. How did you get on at home? Did you agree with Marara and our studio guests? I'm sure you had similar thoughts. Now, all of the words we've looked at today have something in common. They are a type of a noun. Can someone remind us what a noun is? Yes, Bikatsi? A noun is the name of a person, place, or thing. That's right. Now, most nouns have a quality that we can hear, taste, touch, smell, and taste. Now, who can give me an example of a noun? Yes, Katua? A table. Aha, uh -huh, very good. A table. Now, this is a table. We can see it and we can touch it. But there are some nouns that we cannot experience using the five senses. Now, we call these nouns abstract nouns. Now, abstract nouns and nouns that we cannot see, smell, touch, taste, or hear. Now, let's all say abstract nouns together. Abstract nouns! Oh, 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 do you mean like the word anger? That's right. Now, anger is a noun that exists as an emotion or a feeling. We cannot taste, touch, feel, or smell anger but we can express it, just like sadness, pain, or happiness. Now, who can give me some examples of this noun? Yes, Washira? Fear. I can feel fear, but I cannot see or hear it. Yes, and you can't taste, smell, or touch it either. But does that make it an abstract noun? Yes, it does. Now, let's look at this sentence and see if we can spot the nouns. When John dived into the river to rescue the puppy, the crowd was amazed at his bravery. Now, which are the nouns? Yes, Mudoni? John. Aha. Uh -huh. Someone oh, else? Me, me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes, Marara? River. Aha. Uh -huh. Super. Someone else? Yes, Sarah? Crowd. Aha. Uh -huh. Very good. Someone else? Yes, Pikachu? Puppy. Puppy? 
And someone else, yes, Katua? Bravery. Very good. Now, we can see John, River, Puppy, and Crowd, but we cannot see, smell, taste, touch, or hear bravery. And that means that bravery is an abstract noun. Ooh, 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 ooh. I know another one, I know another one. Yes, Marara? Courage. Aha, uh -huh, very good. Does someone else have another one? Yes, Washira? Beauty. Uh, well done, all of you. Now, let's finish our lesson with a game. I have some nouns here and I'll hold them up and you will tell me whether it's a noun or it's an abstract noun. My first word is anger. Yes, Mudoni? An abstract noun. Aha, uh -huh, it is an abstract noun. Tree. Yes, Sarah? A noun. Aha, uh -huh, very good. Sadness. Yes, Christabel? Abstract noun. Very good. Joy. Yes, Washira? Abstract noun. Very good. Chair. Yes, Katua? A noun. Aha, uh -huh, very good. Bravery. Yes, Bikati? An abstract noun. Excellent. Medal. Yes, Mudoni? A noun. Aha, uh -huh, super. Calmness. Yes, Christabel? Abstract noun. Very good. And the last one, shoe. Ooh, 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 I know that one. Yes, Mariah? Shoe is a noun because you can see it and touch it. And if it's like one of my old sports shoes, you can even smell it. Oh. <laughs> <Marara>. <laughs> That's very good, you've all done very well. How did you get on at home? Now why don't you keep making a list of abstract nouns and keep practicing. And remember, an abstract noun is a noun that you cannot see, hear, touch, taste, or smell. Excellent. Now don't go anywhere because we're about to get more creative on Art Zone. You know, art is not just about painting and drawing and the things that we make. It's also about music. So I'm going to introduce to you our guest today. And this is Barbara Grantai, and she's going to tell us what she does. Barbara, tell us more about yourself. I am an artist. I'm a musician, a songwriter, I'm an author, I'm a painter, and that makes me an artist. So oh. yeah, art is plenty of stuff. And you have a guitar, could you tell us a bit more about that? This is a lovely instrument. A guitar is a string musical instrument. Now, what happens is that when I strum uh, the string, it gives a distinct note. Now, all the strings give different distinct notes. <laughs> And then we have the frets. And this is where I can press on the string differently to get a chord. Sounds good? Yeah, that, that sounds That just really, sounds like fun. It <laughs> sounds really lovely. Yeah. And you write your own songs? Yes, I do. Now, how, how do you do that? Sometimes I use the guitar, I'll play a chord like that, and it might give me an idea. Or I just write my song without the instrument and I use it to accompany me when I'm performing. I want to hear one of the songs that you've written. Would you play us a song? Gladly. Africa, Africa. Thank you so much oh, for bro, sharing you. that song. Well, kids, I hope you're feeling inspired. I definitely want to try singing. And if you come across a guitar, try playing and then make some music. Goodbye. Bye-bye. It's 
so amazing how Auntie Sana and Uncle Supu come up with these amazing ideas. But now it's time for something a little different. We will go and join our Spellit competitors and find out who the champion for today is. Animal, animal. chapter, building, narrow, building. respect, respect. deep, vegetable, work. 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 Welcome to Spellit. Gatti, Andati, and Stacy. You're about to step out of the shadows and into the light. You will compete for the top prize of the Nozone Spelling Champion. If you win, you will go home with your very own Nozone Dictionary. Now each contender has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, just say repeat and the word will be repeated for you. Now each word is worth one point. So the more words you spell correctly, the greater your chances of winning. Are the rules clear? Yes. Gatti, you're up first. Kindly take your place on the spelling zone. Gatti, your 30 seconds start now. Beat. B-E-A-T. Sport. S-P-O-T. Coach. C O A C H. Accept. A double C P E T. Compete. C O M P E T. Trainer. T R A I N E R. Football. F double O. Time is up. Please step back. Andati, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. And that, your 30 seconds start now. Lost. L-O-S-T. Team. T-E-A-M. Score. S-C-O-R-E. Defeat. D-E-A-F-E-T. Whistle. W-H-I-S-T-L-E. Uniform. U-N-I-F-O-R-M. Competitor. C O M P E T E R. Swimming. S W I double M E I N G. Spectator. Time is up. Well done, Well done. Please step back. <laughs> Stacy, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Stacy, your 30 seconds start now. Goal. G O L G O L G O A L Match M A T H M M A T C H Track T R A C K Rugby R U B B B Y Basketball B S B A S K E T B U L Referee R E the R -E Time is out. Please step back. We can now reveal the scores. In third place, we have Gatti. Let's give her a round of applause, everyone. In second place is Stacy, which means our winner is. And Dati, let's give him a round of applause. Well done. So well done, Dati. Well done. Congratulations. You are today's No Zone Spelling Champion. Show everyone your dictionary. Let's give him another round of applause. Well done. Oh, you know what? It's really tough being in the spotlight. Oh, yes, it is. So now let's relax with an interesting African tale. And we will later join Ranger Rukia for another exciting adventure in Wild Zone. everyone how are you today I am going to read you a very funny story about two friends who just loved playing football I hope you enjoy it remember to listen out for this week's buzzwords the match
Once upon a time, there lived a baboon and a buffalo. They were the greatest of friends and would spend every day playing together. From the moment the sun rose to the moment it set over the plains of the Maasai Mara. Baboon and Buffalo's favorite sport was football. Baboon would run along dribbling the ball towards Buffalo. As soon as Baboon passed Buffalo the ball, Buffalo would kick it with all his might through giraffe's legs. Buffalo and Baboon would then run around cheering and whistling until they were out of breath. <laughs> they were really the best of friends. One day, Mama Rhino announced that there was to be a huge football match to celebrate the birth of baby Rhino. But only animals with horns were invited. Buffalo had big horns, beautiful curved ones, as you know. So he began practicing his kicks in preparation for the big game. But what about baboon? Baboons don't have horns. Don't worry. Buffalo wouldn't let a little thing like that stop his best friend from playing. Oh, no. Buffalo was determined to find a way to let Baboon play in the big match. And so the two friends put their heads together to come up with a plan. And they did just that. They came up with an amazing solution. Baboon would pretend to be an animal with horns. They decided to make horns for Baboon and stick them to his head. <laughs> they visited the bees who gave them beeswax to use for glue. They found some pointy sticks that looked like horns and stuck them to Baboon's head. Buffalo stood back to admire his work. He smiled broadly. Baboon looked as much a horned animal as any other. Well, almost. The day of the football match arrived and the two friends turned up at the stadium together. As Buffalo took his position near the goalposts, he advised his friend Baboon not to run too fast or to jump up and down when he scored a goal. No one must find out that your horns aren't real, he warned. As soon as the referee blew his whistle, the two teams of horned animals started running up and down the pitch, chasing the ball and hoping to be the first to score a goal. It was such an exciting game, Baboon couldn't resist trying to run for the ball. He ran faster and faster, dribbling the ball between other animals' legs, completely forgetting all about his friend's advice. The other animals on the team were so impressed by Baboon's football skills that they kept passing him the ball. Baboon was so excited by the cheers of the spectators and so alive with excitement that he lost all his good sense and started to do backflips in jubilation when Buffalo kicked the winning goal. When he saw this, Buffalo was really worried about his friend's horns and he tried to get near to Baboon to remind him not to move about so much. But Baboon was surrounded by the other players who wanted to learn more about his football tricks and so Buffalo couldn't get near him. Baboon was so happy that his team had won, he couldn't stop showing off. He cleverly bounced the ball from his tail to his head and back again. But suddenly the bee's wax glue became unstuck and off fell Baboon's horns. The crowd gasped. The competitors gasped. Baboon looked down at the pile of sticky sticks lying in a heap at his feet. He looked back up into the faces of the horned animals. They were no longer looking at him with admiration. Instead, they were staring at him with anger. Those aren't horns, snarled Rhino. They are sticks. Animals with horns can't play with animals who don't have horns. The rest of the team joined in shouting at Baboon. The crowd began to close in on him, when suddenly there was a loud snort, and Buffalo burst into the crowd. He stood right beside his best friend and stared at the other animals. Baboon is my best friend. Just because he doesn't have horns doesn't mean he shouldn't be able to play with us. 
He is the best footballer amongst us. We should be proud to have him on our team. <laughs> Some of the animals looked at the floor in shame. If you won't play with him just because he is different, then I won't play with you. Baboon leapt onto Buffalo's back and they walked off together. Thank you, Buffalo, said Baboon. You're my best friend. And you're mine, replied Buffalo. And from that day, Baboon and Buffalo played football together every day with their other friends, horns or no horns. The end. I hope you enjoyed the story. Did you hear any of the buzzwords? I bet you did. Well, that's all we had time for. I hope to see you soon. Hello, Nose on Rangers. I am Rija Rukia. Wow, did you see that big bad nose on Rangers? Well, today, we are going to learn all about that beautiful bird, the king of the sky. This magnificent bird is called a fish eagle. It is only found in Africa. It is called a fish eagle because it loves eating fish. Mmm, yummy. Its head and tail are white in color, while its wings and torso are black and brown. It has a yellow beak with a sharp black point and deadly claws. Just look at it, it's so majestic, it looks like a painting. The fish eagle lives in an environment where there are lots of other birds and animals that eat fish as well. This includes storks, herons and scary crocodiles. Sometimes the fish eagle must fight for its food. They can be very cheeky and even work in pairs to steal fish from other birds. those different calls made by the fish eagle? The fish eagle has one call to mark its territory and a different mating call to attract its mate. Just like twins, the fish eagle is always seen in pairs of male and female. Fish eagles love staying together as a family. They even share their food. Their favorite type of fish is the catfish and the lungfish. At times, the fish eagles eat flamingos and other water birds. It also feeds on insects. The fish eagle is very big. Its length varies from 65 centimeters to 75 centimeters. It has strong bones, which it gets from eating lots of fish. Fish is good for the fish eagle's health and also for our own health. By eating lots of fish, we get vitamin D, which gives us strong bones and energy just like the fish eagle. The fish eagle hunts with its sharp eyes. When it sees a fish in the water, it swoops down and catches it with its feet. This fish eagle does not mind getting a little wet when catching its tasty fish. They hunt during the day, mostly in the morning. As you know, the early bird catches the worm. Well, that's all for now, Nose on Rangers. I hope you enjoyed learning about the magnificent fish eagle. Until next time, bye. Well, it's been really great having you here with us today. Until next time, bye. bye.